She was queen for only nine days, but her story is one of the most tragic in English history. Lady Jane Grey was a young woman thrust into a dangerous game of politics, and she paid the ultimate price. In this video, I'm going to tell you her story. Lady Jane Grey was a tragic figure in English history, known as the Nine Days Queen. She was only 16 years old when she was executed for her part in a failed plot to overthrow Queen Mary I. But who was Lady Jane Grey and why did she become queen in the first place? Born in the autumn of 1537 as the eldest daughter of Lady Frances and Henry Grey, third Marquess of Dorset, Jane came from a wealthy and well-connected family, with King Henry VIII as her great uncle, through her grandmother no less. It's no wonder that Jane and her parents were regularly seen at court, but Jane's royal ties aren't the only interesting thing about her. This young lady was no slouch in the education department either. Like many girls of her social standing, Jane received a rigorous and comprehensive education at home, at the family's residence of Bradgate House in Leicester. With brains and royal blood, it's no wonder that Lady Jane Grey made a name for herself in history. Lady Jane Grey was a highly educated young woman who excelled in her studies, particularly in classical languages like Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. She was also fluent in French and Italian, making her a well-rounded and cultured individual. In addition to her linguistic abilities, Jane was also introduced to Protestantism at a young age through her father and tutors. Despite her love for learning, Jane was not particularly fond of sports and hunting, which were popular pastimes among the nobility of the time. Instead, she preferred to spend her time studying and reading, with Plato being one of her favorite philosophers. In fact, when asked why she wasn't outside playing with others, she famously replied, I wist all their sport in the park is but a shadow to the joy that I get in Plato. Alas, good people, they never knew what pure pleasure was. Jane's love for learning and her exceptional intellectual abilities caught the attention of many at court, and in the spring of 1547, when she was 10 years old, she was sent to live with Thomas Seymour who was married to King Henry VIII's sixth wife, Queen Catherine Parr. It was during her time at Seymour's home that Jane's life would take a dramatic turn, leading to her eventual rise to the throne and tragic end. During the Tudor period, it was not uncommon for aristocratic children to be sent off to live with other households, particularly if those households had a higher social standing. After all, who doesn't love a good old-fashioned game of social climbing? But seriously, this practice allowed children to learn etiquette and increased their chances of finding a suitable patron or making a good marriage. Enter Thomas Seymour, a close family friend with the king's uncle, via his late sister, who just happened to be Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour. Thomas saw the potential benefit of having Lady Jane Grey under his control and let's be real here, who wouldn't want a beautiful, intelligent and well-connected young lady like Jane in their grasp? Thomas had grand plans to marry Jane to the king once they reached adulthood. And with his wife Catherine Parr overseeing their education and upbringing, it seemed like everything was falling into place for this power-hungry couple. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned for Thomas Seymour and Lady Jane Grey. Catherine Parr, Thomas's wife and the stepmother of King Edward VI, was a devout Protestant and well-educated woman who enjoyed the arts and music. She made it a point to share these passions with her stepchildren and Lady Jane Grey, who blossomed into a brilliant, sophisticated and devout young lady under Catherine's care. Tragically, Catherine died in childbirth in September 1548, and Jane was returned to her parents, but it wasn't long before she was back in Thomas Seymour's household. If you've been enjoying this video, our YouTube data shows 0.1% of our viewers aren't subscribed, and it looks like that's you. So do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications, so you never miss another video. You see, Jane was a valuable asset as a third in line to the throne, especially if she were to marry King Edward VI. 
and Thomas Seymour, being the ambitious man that he was, wanted to get as close to Jane as possible. But let's just say that Thomas's plans for Jane didn't exactly pan out as he had hoped. Stay tuned to find out what happens to our dear Lady Jane Grey. A new era had dawned in England, with the young and oh-so-adorable King Edward VI taking the throne at the ripe old age of nine. But let's be real here. Ruling a kingdom at such a tender age is no easy feat, so a council of regency was formed to help out with the whole ruling thing. And who better to chair the said council than the king's uncle, Edward Seymour, first Duke of Somerset. As a young king's protector, Edward Seymour took full advantage of his powerful position, much to the annoyance of the council and his younger brother, Thomas Seymour, who was probably thinking to himself, hey, what about me? I want to be in charge too. In a desperate and somewhat ridiculous attempt to get close to the boy king, Thomas Seymour attempted to break into Edward VI's private apartments on the night of January 16, 1549. Spoiler alert, it didn't go well. Thomas was caught, sent to the Tower of London, and eventually met his demise on Tower Hill on March 20th, 1549. As for our dear Lady Jane Grey, she was exiled and had no chance of marrying the king. Poor Jane, it seems like fate just wasn't on her side. Things took a horrible turn for our King Edward VI. In January 1553, the 15-year-old monarch came down with a nasty fever and cough, and unfortunately, things just kept getting worse from there. It was a real roller coaster of an illness, with the king's condition appearing to improve before worsening again. With his time running out, Edward became concerned about the fate of the crown and decided to write a little something called the device for the inheritance, which was basically just a fancy way of saying who gets to be the next king or queen when I'm gone. Now the first draft of this document didn't include dear old Jane as the heir, but Edward eventually changed his mind and named her as his successor. Why the change of heart, you ask? Well, it turns out that none of Edward's other cousins had produced a male heir, and Edward was super concerned about making sure his heir was a male protestant. In fact, he was so concerned about it that he disowned his half-sisters, Mary and Elizabeth, in favor of his cousin Lady Frances Grey and her children, including Jane, Catherine and Mary. By June 1553, it was clear that the king was not long for this world, and he amended his will to name Jane as his successor. King Edward VI caused quite a stir with his second version of the device for the inheritance. It's not every day that a teenage king goes against the laws of succession and names his cousin as his successor. But that's exactly what Edward did. The document was signed by the Privy Council and several prominent lawyers, causing a great deal of controversy and causing many people to ask, what the heck, Edward? The rightful heir according to the laws of succession was Mary, but Edward, being the rebellious teenager that he was, decided to shake things up and go with his gut instead. And as we all know, teenage gut instincts are never wrong. Just ask any 16-year-old who's ever gotten a tattoo they regret. But hold on a minute. While Jane would be queen, the crown could only be passed on to a male successor. If Jane were to kick the bucket without producing any little heirs of her own, the crown would be passed down to the son of one of her sisters. Talk about a royal headache. Despite the controversy, Lady Jane Grey was declared queen on July 10, 1553. It's not clear from historical records whether Lady Jane actually wanted to be queen or not. Some accounts suggest that she was reluctant to accept the throne and was only persuaded to do so by her parents and other members of the nobility who were involved in the plot to overthrow Queen Mary. Other accounts suggest that Lady Jane was a bit of an ambitious gal and was eager to become queen. Either way, it's safe to say that Lady Jane Grey's reign was a short and tumultuous one. Lady Jane Grey was forced to accept the throne against her will and was subsequently convicted of treason for her role in the plot to overthrow Queen Mary. Just nine days later, on July 19, 1553, Mary Tudor, the older sister of King Edward VI, successfully claimed the throne and had Lady Jane arrested. 
Lady Jane's reign as queen was short-lived, lasting just nine days, shorter than it takes for bread to go stale. But as they say, it's not the length of your reign that matters, it's what you do with it. Lady Jane was imprisoned in the Tower of London and charged with high treason. She was found guilty and sentenced to death, but initially spared by Queen Mary. However, life is unpredictable and things can change in an instant. Queen Mary I was not popular among many of her subjects. She was known for her strict adherence to Catholicism and her persecution of Protestants, which led to the execution of hundreds of religious protesters and earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. Queen Mary's intention to marry Philip of Spain, a Catholic, was also unpopular with many of her subjects. She was seen as a puppet of her husband and many feared that he would use his influence to further Catholicize England and turn it into a second Spain. It's safe to say that Lady Jane Grey's time as queen was filled with drama and controversy. Queen Mary's reign was marked by economic and political instability, which made many of her subjects unhappy with her rule. As a result, she faced opposition and rebellion from various factions within England leading to conflict and turmoil throughout her reign. Queen Mary saw Lady Jane Grey and her supporters as a threat to her own reign and was determined to assert her authority and suppress any challenges to her power. Lady Jane's execution was seen as a necessary step in achieving that goal, and on February 12, 1554, she was beheaded at the young age of 16. Lady Jane Grey's tragic story has captivated historians and the public alike, and she is remembered as a victim of the political agenda. While her reign as Queen of England was brief and tragic, she remains a fascinating figure in English history. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this video right here.